What's going on beautiful people? Welcome back to another episode of the After You Cast. Now today we're doing another solo episode. We're going to be breaking down something that I think is very, very important and something that I've been meaning to talk about for a little while. And that is accountability. Now, I want to keep things specific and I don't really want to just have this fly off and go in all different tangents. So we're going to talk and discuss accountability in reference to your career or achieving or chasing your goals because it can be slightly different when we're talking about accountability in the real world in terms of your social settings um, maybe different relationships and friendship groups that you're in but we're going to try and keep this more specific towards your career and the creative things that you do so before we jump into all and everything I want to give a massive big shout out to all of you guys for supporting and um, showing love and it's really important I think that you have people that really you know they, they, they support you in the background and they kind of give you those silent nudges in the right direction you know um, it can get a little bit overwhelming sometimes and how crazy everything is in the world right now COVID, finance, strikes the economy, health, war. <laughs> there's this like, what's going on, man? Like, there's 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 all kind of stuff that's going on in the world right now, and so many people have different circumstances to overcome. But in reference to this conversation, I want to keep this kind of specific in terms of talking about accountability and how it reflects to you personally, and then how that can reflect around people that you know as well. So. Across the board, accountability has a few different, let's say, meanings or interpretations. But as a blank statement, accountability really comes down to you being willing to take responsibility and take ownership of the decisions and the choices that you make and how that can just affect you in life. And we're going to discuss, obviously, a couple of those things. So jumping straight into the conversation accountability for me is one of the most important things that you should be paying attention to in whatever it is that you create or whatever that you do now you could be an individual who runs their own small business it could be somebody that works in a, a larger company or you know perhaps you're doing volunteering or charitable work as well but really and truthfully it doesn't matter across the board your accountability is going to show up and in some cases it kind of precedes who you are as a person or a group or a brand or whatever it is because the willingness to take on the accountability and take things on take the responsibility of the decisions that you make usually is the separating factor between people or businesses that are successful and they continue to grow and they keep moving forward as opposed to the ones that become stagnant and people forget about. So you really want to be in that category on that on that forward trajectory, that forward momentum where you're growing, you're establishing, you're making new connections, you're making new links. But one thing I've noticed is that people who struggle with accountability or they struggle with taking on that responsibility and they're always looking to offload and you know look for excuses or shift blame, typically those people are the ones who struggle the most. So I've had to overcome some of those things from a young age, from naturally looking at, looking to find uh, a reason or you could say an excuse as to why this hasn't happened or let's say just using my personal um, upbringing from not having as much as maybe some other people out there have in terms of finances, in terms of having a traditional home environment. but these could be used and then I can now just perpetuate that in my future but then it's really important to take note of things and say how, how am I going to be held accountable yes these scenarios did exist or do exist but then how can I make the right steps to overcome them or to move past them or grow past them so as I said for me personally taking accountability has been one of the key things that I've noticed has been able to help push me forward and also help help me to work with certain groups of people. What you'll tend to find is that with accountability, it's very easy to spot the individuals who are very quick to shift blame. So 
naturally, as we said, most people don't really want to work with those people, at least long term. They may do little bits of work with you here or there, yeah, 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 all right, cool. But when it comes to working long term and building and collaborating and establishing things that are significant and will last the length of time, those things require people to be present, to be accountable and to be responsible for what they've done. The creativity is great, the ideas is great, the even the execution could be fantastic. But after that is done, let's say something goes wrong, let's say it doesn't happen the way that it's meant to be, are you going to be there and are you going to be available to be accountable for those decisions that were made? And the quicker you can realise that taking the accountability on is really the position and the place that you want to be, the quicker you're going to be able to make those leaps and bounds in the right direction to where you want to get to. So essentially for me, accountability is one of the most fundamental things that a person carries with them because you're not looking to shift blame onto others. You're not looking to find excuses. You're not looking to do anything that takes it away from you making the decision, you making the choice, because ultimately you want to be able to live in those decisions you want to be a product of your of your choices which we typically are but most people should i say correction a lot of people out there will try to find another way to rationalize or explain why things may not be going right for them in my creative career it's been able to help me take on criticism with my work so when people critique a piece of my artwork and ask for more or say they don't quite like this or they want this changed I'm not going to immediately jump to the conclusion of oh this person has a problem with me or oh this problem is uh, this, this person's just trying to get me down or they're just hating and I think that's a, sometimes a dangerous place to, to position yourself because what happens is you get comfortable using that and then what happens is the value stops being created behind the scenes you're more focused on the thoughts and the opinions of those and trying to shift that blame in other directions as opposed to taking it on board and saying, no, no, hold on, now nah, this is just my decision. I need to make the choice. I need to be accountable for the choices that I've made and I need to be able to analyze them after the fact and say, okay, cool, this didn't quite work. This did work. All right, how can I change things to make it better moving forward? So accountability, why it's personally key for me it's helped me to progress in my career as a creative, as an artist. It's also helped me as an athlete in my early years to take on that critique, take on that criticism, to improve, to stay disciplined, to remain consistent and to stay focused on what I'm building and what I'm trying to get to. I never like to personally shift blame. Of course, you know, we'd be taking on things that you know directly isn't your fault. However, if you can be a solutions person, if you can come in and you can help people overcome situations as opposed to adding more problems or adding more issues, you're going to be more sought after as an individual. People are going to want to work with you. More likely, they're going to want to gravitate around you because you are the person who comes in and you take that stress away. You make things a little bit easier as opposed to coming in with a whole new set of problems to make their life that much harder. So that's why I think really accountability can really be utilized. It can also translate and transfer to other facets of your life, to other positions, other places. But when you're talking about your career, your passion, the things that you really care about, that you go out into the world and you try to create and manifest, it's so, so important that you take that accountability for what you've put out there so that when people come back and say, hey, I don't like this, I don't like that, or I like this, I like that, you're in the right frame of mind and an understanding that you're accountable for those decisions, you're accountable for those actions and you're able to take forth of that and move forward. A little quick personal story, just to add a little bit more clarity to what I'm trying to say. Let's rewind time a little bit, let's go back in time. There was a time when I was transitioning away from playing football, from the schooling environment, from out of uni, from out of school and stepping into the real world. And for a lot of people, they're going to experience this um, between the ages of 21, 22, 23, some people a little bit longer, depending on what they're, they're studying. But 
for most people stepping into adulthood in those early early 20s that is such a pivotal time it's such an important time because it can set up the next 5 10 maybe even 15 years of what your life is going to look like so when it comes down to the relationships that you have the friendships that you have the credits that you've built up to this point the accolades that you've been able to bring in or achieve these things will become ingrained they'll become part of your conditioning so i know for me as i was transitioning out of university into the real world i really struggled initially with not being in an environment of receiving knowledge information teachers professors even just having students around that you can readily get information from i really struggled with having or knowing where i should be spending and you know sharing my personal time with our work typically we will find the time for it if you're passionate about something you usually will find the time for it so I don't usually I'm not trying to focus on that side of things if you're individual if you're passionate about something and you, and you don't really want to put the work in you're probably not that passionate about it that's that's just really you know the truth of how things are but when it comes down to the nuances of how you actually extract more value you have to start looking at things like what am I doing in my downtime what am I doing in um, my personal free time what are my my social settings look like all of these different things and I know for me being sociable, being an athlete, being connected to a lot of different community groups, a lot of different um, social groups and things like that. It was difficult to know where I start to spend my personal time in the real world. Reason being is because I know a lot of you would have heard this statement. It's not necessarily what you know, but it's who you know. And I'm sure a lot of you just finished the sentence for me, but this is the truth of the matter. This is the world that we live in. This is the world that we live in and unfortunately it's a world that is heavily run upon social connectivity and resources and assets. So when we talk about the resources, those are the tangible things, you know, the buildings, the, the infrastructure, the properties, all of these different things that we actually own. These things are really the things that actually make the difference when it comes up to acquiring that difference and understanding the difference however let's so we rewind that a little bit the resources are the tangible things that we can see visibly that we're trying to strive towards getting sometimes they can be material um, a lot of the time they are property um, cars jewelry items essentially those are the resources and the assets that people try to get hold of because they hold value and then you've also got the other parts which are the things that you don't necessarily see the intangibles so the character building the instilling of discipline the filling of free time all of these different things are things that I didn't necessarily pay attention to and I was very very let's say unsure of where I should be where I should be spending that time especially the free time because relating back to that previous statement about who you know unfortunately when you get out into the real world you are going to have to go out there and make certain connections with people you may need to go out and go to that works drink event that you may not want to go to you may want to go to that social setting or that social event that social networking event where there's going to be some people in your field that you might get to meet so that necessarily isn't something that factors into what is a necessity for your business for your brand for your passion however making those connections and being willing to be open-minded to those connections can be the difference and in many cases I've even seen that sometimes there are individuals who <laughs> are able to just know the right people and that's enough for them to get through you know having the friend in the right place having an uncle an auntie a, a family member and it's always nice when we have that individual who helps us and then typically we're usually a little more upset when we hear that somebody we know just got that position or just got that job or just got that opportunity just because they know somebody 
but this is an unfortunate reality of life so what are we going to do about it are we going to make an excuse and say hey people who know each other shouldn't give people shouldn't give each other opportunities that's a little bit unrealistic i think what you should do is take it for what it is understand the reality that exists and then find ways that you can best get the results that you're looking for each industry each career each passion will be different for me personally being a creative it's imperative, not just important, it's imperative for creatives to get out there, to make connections, to be willing to have conversations with people that don't necessarily always lead to contracts. They don't always lead to making money off of a project or a new venture. Sometimes you just have to instill and you have to go out there and have quote unquote free time spend time freely with individuals who are in that sector so you may be able to learn something you know there are people out there that might be willing to mentor you might get you into certain rooms in certain places that even your education or your qualifications may not be able to get you into so you can be accountable for the actions of the things that you do and you should be however you should also be accountable for the free time and the things that you do in your downtime that don't necessarily get seen you know I think there was a quote a famous quote by Johnny Wilkinson who said you have to live your life like you're being watched on 24-hour surveillance essentially I can't I'm not 100% sure if that's verbatim I mean, I'll see if I can pull it up or something if I can find it but essentially you have to develop that mindset that there's always someone watching there's always someone out there that's going to judge that's going to make a first impression that's going to try to analyze from the sideline before they come into the connection with you and maybe you know make that connection so you have to be cognitive of all things cognitive of what does my social setting look like am i attracting the right people that i want to work with that i want to be connected to what does my downtime look like what am i spending my time doing what kind of things am I consuming? Are they helping me move to the places that I need to get to? Or are they probably hindering me? And only you really know the answer to that. Only we know the answer to those questions. But when you're able to take the accountability for yourself and you don't allow others to take it away, what you start to develop is personal pride and a personal accountability and a personal responsibility for wanting to get those things done by yourself and as I said earlier people seek out those individuals those are the people who run companies those are the individuals who become CEOs and entrepreneurs and leaders and motivational speakers and mentors in their community it's not always tied to money it's a mindset and it's about the habits and the routine that you develop in order to be able to help others. Figure out, as it is said, what it is that you're passionate about first. Without passion, there is no motion, there is no movement. You're just kind of being moved in a sense. You're not really moving. When you have passion, when you have a focus, when you have something that drives you, you start to do things without really thinking about it because your subconscious is operating. Your mind is telling you to do this even if you don't really want to because you know the benefits that come with that and that is very much the same with accountability you start to take more accountability you start to gain things that you don't necessarily plan for certain connections open up for you certain doors open up and that's what I've personally found and I know a lot of people that I speak with that are also doing well in their own crafts in their own fields right now they say the same thing and they echo the same thing Accountability is the, one of the core foundational points in successful people. What you'll tend to find, the higher level that you go, the more successful a person is, the more accountability they're willing to take on. And there's a level, and this is where we have to be realistic with ourselves, and we have to be honest with ourselves. How far are you willing to go? How much accountability are you willing to take on in order to get to where you want to find that level of success. As I said, higher level of success you get to, the more accountability usually gets taken on. The more responsibility lands on your shoulders, the more pressure 
You know, they hear people say, ah, oh, it feels like a big weight off of my shoulders. People who are in leadership positions don't tend to say that very often because they've constantly got pressure on their shoulders. It's the pressure that other people say makes diamonds, but then it's also the same pressure that people want as a weight off of their shoulders. So we have to make a decision at some point and find out, do you want to operate and handle that pressure? Can you handle that pressure? Or do you need to be honest with yourself and say, hey, maybe that isn't for me. Maybe I wanna live a little bit more of a calmer existence, a more quieter existence and be able to help people in other ways. But if you have decided to take on the role of a leader, the role of a boss, the role of a CEO, the role of a, a mentor, I think it's incumbent upon you to consider and think about the accountability and how much you are willing to take on because you're not only just affecting yourself now, you are now affecting the people in your circle, the other individuals who are looking up to you, the young people that are on their way up, the older people who are looking down and saying, hey, can, we, can I pass the baton on to this individual? Can they carry forth what we've built up and take it to a new place? And not everyone is cut, is cut out to be able to do that. And I've asked myself those tough questions and even sometimes I will say, eh, I'm not sure if I'm willing to do that, but I am willing to do this. There is compromise everywhere, but the ones that really want to get there are the ones who ask those questions. Keep challenging yourself, keep questioning yourself, never settle and get comfortable with what you know as gospel. There's always more information, more knowledge that trumps what you know. So develop the mind of humility and be willing to just take on new things. Never think or act like you know all, because the moment you start to think that you know all is the moment that somebody else is coming behind you with a whole new set of information and advice and ideas that you couldn't even think about. So know where you stand, understand how much accountability you can take on, understand that successful people, accountability is a prerequisite. You're not gonna be able to get through and move forward to the positions in life that you really want to get to without being accountable for those actions. So it's something that you can do by yourself just to kind of get a gauge of people in and around you. Have a look in your, your social media, have a look at your, your account, have a look at people that you follow and subscribe. And then ask yourselves, based off of what position that they're currently in, or what position that they're at in life, how accountable do you think they are? You may already know, but if you don't, ask yourself how accountable you think they really are for what they're putting out into the atmosphere. Because typically, those two things are correlated. Accountability and production. People who produce tend to be very accountable. It's usually the ones who come in and look to leverage their opportunities or leverage other people's creativity or production, but not really the accountability of having to do the work. Be willing to do the work because it's the same work that you're accountable for doing that's gonna separate you from the ones that want to avoid it. My small bit of advice to anyone out there who may be struggling with you know, a heavy workload or um, a crazy work schedule and they're trying to figure out why it's so difficult to break through or why I haven't gotten here yet or any of these different things. Then one, be patient. Two, Ask yourselves how accountable you are for the actions and the things that you actually put out. Who's responsible for the production? Who has to deal with the consequences if mistakes are made? And if you are the individual who deals with those mistakes, pat yourself on the back because you're the one who's gonna to have to find those solutions. And when you do find the solutions, which you will, you will now be armed with another solution in your toolkit and you take those solutions to places with you and you solve problems, not create them. I try to be a solutions-based person. Come in, how can I think about things? How, what, what, how is this operating? How can I add to it? How can I not cause disruption as opposed to adding something positive? It's always going to find that the majority are happy to follow blindly. The majority will always do what the status quo says. 
but the majority also will not reach their goals. This is the unfortunate thing about reality. If all of us could get to where we wanted to be, we'd be living in a utopia, but we're not. So you need to be mindful of the things that you're putting out, the people that you're connecting with, the people that you work with. You know, how are they adding to your life? How are you adding to their life? Are you leveraging from them or off of them as opposed to collaborating and connecting with them? You have to understand where you place yourself and understand what you're accountable for. And the more people can understand their accountability and how they can utilize it in a positive way, the more I think we would have better social environments, better working environments where people felt more empowered and more connected. Not social media where we have clicks and likes and shares, but where you have real community groups that come from that and turn into something real. So this is a closing point. It's always been my thought that social media is very advantageous for the creatives, for the people who like to create art, or like to be open, be free, travel, all of these different things. Social media is fantastic. But I've only ever really seen it as an accessory. But I think what people are doing is that they're making it a primary, not just a primary focus in your life, but also just a primary in terms of everything. Things must funnel through your social media now today. It's almost like you've got to have people come through there before they respect you. Like partners won't take you seriously for a date if they don't see you have a respectable online profile. The game has changed drastically in the last 10 to 15 years purely based off of social media being introduced. So I have always looked at social media as an accessory to life. It should help to enhance the connections that you've got as opposed to create and establish new ones. I believe that you can only really establish these connections with people when you actually meet them. Yes, you can probably connect with them, follow them, see what they're up to. But how will you really know how they're doing, what they're doing, how they're trying to achieve their goals, maybe helping them with their goals, if we actually never meet in person? And I think that's too much of what we have today, which is a lack of willingness to go outside of your house, of your working environment, to be able to make those real connections. So, for me, accountability is one of the most important things that a person can have, that can hold, and can be utilised in the real world to be able to take you where you need to get to. And I will also add that it translates as well. So when we're talking about your finances, to your relationships, to your friendships, to your working life scenario, your work life scenario, accountability and your willingness to be accountable will typically translate across all of those different forms so if you are accountable for your budgeting and being cognitive of how you spend money it's likely that that's going to translate into your working environment and how you organize your time and how you put projects together and how you're able to efficiently create or complete projects will typically translate across all of those mediums. So being accountable will make sure that all of those things stay in one, one controlled unit where you can say, hey, I'm accountable for this and it also translates to here. And then I'm also able to see the benefits of how that helps me here. And adversely, on the other side, the less accountable that you are, the more often or not, those things are also going to translate as well so if you're a person who doesn't show up to work on time and you've constantly use the excuse of i couldn't catch this or i couldn't do that and i couldn't do this and then that translates into your your budget of your finances and i spent this and now i don't have any money and you look back and say well i did spend money on that and i didn't have to i could have budgeted and not spent it the discipline 
there are so many different reasons for why and how you can overcome things. But with the moment you sit and say, I'm not going to be accountable for those things, that's where no one can really help you. So ask yourself the tough question if you're willing to be accountable and why you should be accountable and how that can actually affect and change your life. Some people out there are very, some, there's a lot of people out there that I learn from personally that are very accountable on their day-to-day -day life and they teach me and I learn from them of how I can improve. But I think it is important to take note and be aware that is a key separator, a common denominator across successful people and people who tend to realize their goals. We don't want no bog standard average stuff. We don't do average over here. Everything has to be at a high level. Otherwise, what's the point? What are we doing it for? You know? So that's just my little way of thinking. But yeah. Anyway, until the next episode, guys, peace and love.